Now we've run through who our panelists are going to be. I just want to introduce the first speaker and we're going to um, follow a theme today. So it's going to be a storyline. So really the first place, um, obviously to start the year is to find that fulfillment. What do you, what, what do you inspire to be in 2022 and how are you going to get there? The first place to do is to obviously to define what those are. So to speak on that subject matter would be Nikia Kerele de Sosa. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay, Ivy? Yes, I can. Fantastic. And thank you for the introductions and a big welcome to everyone and including my panelists who I've just gotten to know as well. So I'm really excited about this network. Um, welcome everybody. Good evening from the UK and really excited to be here to just um, have a quick chat. There's a lot to cover. So I'm just going to glance through a couple of things. Uh, Ivy has only given me about I don't know, eight to 10 minutes to just gist. <laughs> so eight minutes, okay, no formal Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna cover a couple of things and I'm hoping that when we have our conversations along the way, then I can cover other stuff as well. Uh, so nothing too formal this evening. So um, yeah, so my topic is really finding fulfillment in mid career transitions. Um, so I'm in that place at the moment. So I'm hoping that sharing my own experiences would also encourage you as well. So when we are talking about transitions, I mean, we're talking about a new year, 2022. You know how all of us kind of have New Year's resolutions. We want to do this, we want to do that and all that. But you know what happens with our New Year's resolutions? There's a research that says by the 20 something of January, 80% of the resolutions are gone nobody's really following them. So I think that, you know, it's all about preparation. And so let's talk a little bit about transitions. So for me, transitions, and I'll explain what I mean by transitions. So transitions in life, particularly, especially in our careers, can be a very, very positive thing. People see transitions, they're like, oh my God, that's scary. Why, why are you transitioning? What's happening? But transitions can be very positive. They allow us to grow but it needs to be planned for, and those transitions in our lives, particularly our careers, need to be well managed as we're taking those decisions. I can assure you that transitions are definitely coming. The same way the seasons of life are changing, transitions will come because the seasons in our lives are changing. We are at different age groups, and so transitions will happen. So we need to be prepared for the transitions, particularly in our careers. And when we say mid-career, I'm really talking about individuals that perhaps may have had about 15 years experience or more, or in my case, I've had 30 years experience and have a lot of colleagues and friends who now are probably uh, revealing my age, 50 plus and over, and really going through serious major transitions in terms of their lives and consequently their careers. So examples of transitions, for example, you might be moving from having worked as an employee for a company for many years, like I did for, for a consulting firm for about 15 years. And then I moved into being running my own business. That for me was my first major transition. You know, it's a different when you are working for an employer. When somebody, you get your paycheck every month and you go to work, you know where you're going, you know? But when you now wake up one day, 15 years later, or how many years later, you then decide, well, you know, I have this idea, this burning idea. I want to become an entrepreneur and own my own business. I want to find fulfillment in doing something different, something I have always wanted to do. That is an example of a transition or vice versa the other way. Another transition is there are many people that have not worked for years, particularly some women that chose to stay home and nurture the family and the children and decide years later when the kids are grown that they now want to go back and do what they've always wanted to do. So that's a major transition in that person's life. And that happens to a lot of women. I certainly have a lot of friends who are going through that transition. There's also the transition of early retirement. You know, what happens to us when in our 50s or 60s, we decide that we're no longer working? What happens next? These are all major transitions. In my case, another example is pivoting your career. So for example, I was someone that worked in uh, the finance accounting field for about 15 years. 
that was my first major transition when I then decided to be an entrepreneur. And then I completely left that field and I went into human resources, a field that I had not worked in before and, and spent another 15 years in that career. And you could be going into another industry. So for example, now my third transition has been a, a recent pivot into the international development field, which is where I'm working now. So very much in the social impacts uh, phase. So it's, it's not really HR anymore. It's completely different. So I've had to step back and pivot again. So that again is a transition. So transitions can be tough and they come with uncertainties. They come with fear, we talk, come with anxieties. And I'm hoping that Dr. Organ will sort of talk a little bit around this maybe later when she talks about what happens to us when we're going through these transitions. And transitions always force us to come out of our comfort zones because you're not gonna do what you were doing before. But you, because you're looking for something different, you cannot continue to imagine that it's gonna feel the same way. So it's gonna stretch you and it's gonna pull you beyond what you're already doing. So the first question I guess we need then need to ask is, having given that context is, when is it best to take these decisions to transition? At what stage, when do we do this? I need to say that there's never a good time to take a transition, um, you know, there's no exact time. Everybody's transition period for whatever decisions they're making in their own seasons of life is, is unique to you. So don't try not to let other people force you. You know, when you hear a lot of people say, oh, you've been working for 15 years. Why don't you start your own business? No, maybe you're not ready. Maybe that's not your timing. So your own transition has to be thought through and prepared. And I'll say one or two things about that. But I always feel that our transitions are prompted initially by a sense of dissatisfaction there's an inner feeling that you have that you're no longer happy doing what it is that you're doing you're no longer excited about going to work you're no longer excited about you know maybe that work you were doing or what, what business you were doing or the state that you're in with your life so that is really where you then need to start questioning yourself. What else am I good at? What else do I want to do? What is this dream that I've always wanted to have? What are these passions that I have that now, you know, mid-career, much later in my career, isn't it time for me to branch out and do what it is that really, really fulfills me? Um, you know how it is when we start our, our careers? We start in the beginning, we get a job, we just, we need a paycheck and we keep doing that. But you know, when you're mid-career, you need to start asking yourself, what is it that really makes me happy? How do I get up every day and be completely fulfilled? Because you know, when you're halfway through your career, you can no longer keep doing what you do every day and not get that sense of fulfillment. So there's a lot of self-reflection that needs to happen. A lot of being self-aware, asking yourself key questions. Um, where are you now? What do you want to be doing? Um, you know, what keeps you up at night? What inspires you? Then you off, obviously, I think the next question would be, what then do you need to do to prepare for these transitions? Because I said earlier, we need to prepare for transitions. You need to strategize, I think, a lot on yourself. What do I need to do next? Do a lot of research and find out what those things are that you really want to do. It's going to take a lot of sitting down and doing a lot of self-reflection and research into what that next step is going to be. Begin to reach out to your network, your, your friends, your network of professionals, clients, customers, um, and start to talk to people about your ideas and what's happening to you. Obviously, you know, perhaps a coach, perhaps a professional colleague or somebody that at least you know can add value. Sit down and start rubbing minds and, you know, things can get a little bit clearer. I have to say to you that once things start getting a bit clearer as to where you want to go, I have to recommend that you will highly need to reskill and upskill. You're going to need to spend a lot of time training, developing yourself attending webinars thank god a lot of them are online and they are free so a lot of upskilling because you cannot go into an industry that you have no idea about or a different direction without upskilling yourself please join committees 
volunteer for things build up your skills in that area test that area before you uh, before you take that transition and before i wrap up because i know that there's so many other people that need to to talk um what would i say pivot and transition with purpose know what it is that you're getting into make sure that you see that that next path is going to give you that fulfillment that you're looking for and whatever that pivot is and pivot at your own time not when you're told by anyone else but when you are ready and when you have made that decision because you are the only one that knows whether or not you have the right mindset the right resources the right contacts you've done enough research to know what it is that you you need to do and my final word it is never ever too late um here i am 30 plus years later taking a decision to pivot into a, a transition into a completely new industry, a different field, and it's never too late. So those are my last words, but I hope that we can chat a little bit more along the way. So back to you, Ivy. Um, okay, uh, that's, well, which of the Ivies now, because there was two of us. Uh, Nike, this is absolutely um, fantastic. I just quickly wanted to jump in now for, for the sake of those who are just joining us to say that um, I want to say a big thank you for joining me or for joining us rather. And I think that uh, you've made the right decision and the right step. Uh, quickly, I just want to say that this program is in two parts. The first part is that you're going to hear um, our speakers speak on various uh, subject matters. And Nike has just spoken about uh, finding fulfillment and transitions. And after they've all spoken, then we're going to have the breakout rooms. Uh, we have uh, breakout rooms where you have then the opportunity to ask questions and to uh, interact with the speaker in a more intimate level. And so um, I, I hope that uh, by listening to them, that you would be able to extrapolate from them the skill sets, the, um, the intelligence, the wisdom there is to uh, to make a, a conscious decision and to transition uh, with purpose, according to what Mika um, uh, has said. So, Ivy, I hand you over. Thank you. I actually, um, I had a quick question before we went on to the next one, please. So, Nika, if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you, how do you, um, um, when you come to the point where you realize that you want to, you, you need to re-strategize for your career, what plans do you actually take in place to make the next step? How do you understand what direction exactly to take? Because, you know, the world is changing so fast. There's all sorts of different technologies and the marketplace is shifting. So I would like to know what the first step is. Thanks, I, 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 think, I think going back to what I said earlier is that um, you know how companies do strategy sessions and they kind of reflect on the different options and scenarios and what the plans are going to One, you, you need to do some sort of self-strategy session. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was making the transitions that I was making, I literally turned around my consulting skills on myself and sat in a room with paper on the walls. What I, what, what I want to be doing next and what I do not want to be doing next. I was very clear as to what it was that I did not want to do again. And I listed all of those things. And then I looked at the things, we have to get very practical when we're doing our planning. I then looked at the things that I was open to doing next. Areas where in my career uh, or in your career, you're thinking, um, I'm really interested in that field. I'm really interested in that role. I'm really interested in starting that business list those things and then start to take them one at a time you have to spend time researching and then ask yourself why am i why do i want to pivot into that area what do i need to do to pivot in that area what is what resources and what time and what and, and when can i do this pivot so by the time i was done with that all my paper on the wall I ended up crossing out so many options because I'd done so much research on and then I was able to narrow down maybe the last one or two which I then did more work on I started talking to people a lot more I started getting involved in that field before I made a decision to pivot into that field so you cannot just transition like that because for example what's happening IB with many people are just moving because that's the latest thing you know that's happening that's where the money is that's where they you know so they're just moving but 
there needs to be a lot of advanced preparation for this. Every field is not for everyone and every opportunity is not for everyone. Right. Thank you for that. I, and I'll also, add, I guess, um, hopefully I'll be in your breakout room so that I can explore more of that, then more of that conversation.